first. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Yes. And I ask you for inspiration to speak and to share. And I am looking forward to what you have to say. And oftentimes I'm surprised also. Speaking of what the Holy Spirit has to say, this morning I woke up and I found out I was about half deaf. I am hearing impaired physically this morning. So if it seems like I'm yelling at you, uh, I just can't hear. The Holy Spirit whispered something to me, and I had to dig deep. He said, suppose you're as hard of hearing spiritually as you are physically. Uh-oh. So I pondered that and I thought, yeah. I could use a little more hearing acuity spiritually, Amen. right? Amen. So now that he's brought it to my attention, I'm hoping my ears will open. <laughs> I can hear. I keep notes because it's been said that I never miss a rabbit hole. Mostly true. It's called a God-sized prayer. I'm going to talk about prayer this morning. I've said earlier in all these years that this generation is our generation. It's the generation that God has set before us. Spiritually, we own it. We're to dominate it. We're to pray through it. We're to minister in it. We're to help God bring in his harvest. This isn't a duck and cover generation where you hide in your closet because you're afraid of the troubles. We do have troubles and they're not going away. But we're not here to save the world, right? We're looking for brothers and sisters to bring into the kingdom with us. That's what we're doing here. So that's why I keep saying seize this generation because we were made for it. I'm a, I'm a nuts and bolts kind of guy. I do all the work on my heart and myself. So the natural question for me comes up, exactly how do we do this? Good question. It's easy to throw out the hype, but it's ours and we're gonna go get it and go get it. But as soon as you step out the door, the question pops in your mind, you know, I don't know how to do this. All right. Question number two, where do you begin? There has to be a beginning. There's always a first step. And the most important thing about the first step is that it's going in the right direction. Right? Amen. They say every journey starts with one step. But you don't get to your destination if you're not going in the direction that God's called us to go. Make sense? Makes sense. Right. So here's how it's done. I could probably stop here, but it's done through prayer and obedience. Getting that? Prayer and obedience is what will bring us into the place where we can minister to this generation and ourselves and each other. We're to live in prayer. You know, Paul says, pray continually, right? Now, I always had trouble with that because I couldn't imagine praying continually. I have a life, I have work to do, places to go. Do I walk around talking and mumbling to myself? I had trouble with that concept. So let's change. Yeah, I know. My wife says you do that all the time anyway. All right. Let's change the words a little bit. Let's say we are to live in prayer. Okay? Think of yourself as having a prayer bubble around you, if you will. Make it six feet. Make it ten feet. Whatever you think you can, you can contain spiritually. So in this prayer bubble, whatever you come in contact with is something that you pray about. God is in this bubble with you. He hears everything you hear, sees everything you see, feels everything you feel, and he directs your thoughts and intentions. Now, in the world, if you get just a little bit out of the line, you'll hear somebody say, hey brother, stay in your way, all right? Heard that? Yeah. Well, for us, it's more like, oh, brother, stay in your bubble. I know, it sounds like something popped in my bubble, right? Okay. Think, prayer bubble, walking. All right. So what are the four purposes of prayer? Let's take a look at what it's all about. Number one, adoration. Amen. You guys good with that word? Mm -hmm. Our first and foremost duty is to acknowledge God's supreme dominion over us. As our creator and father, our absolute dependence on him as his creatures and children in his supreme excellence. Bottom line, love God. And trust me, he is lovable. Yes? All right. Number two, thanksgiving. Prayer allows us to worship and praise the Lord for the good and the bad. Okay? 
God allows bad things. And generally it's to deal with our character, our faith, our trust, our hope. Right? A grateful heart is, is the bottom line of thanksgiving. We must thank God for the good and the bad because all things work together for those who are called in Christ according to his will. The qualifier there, coming right up. Repentance. It also allows us to offer confession of our sins, which should lead to our genuine repentance. Without repentance, this is just a roller coaster ride that never ends. Okay? Why does it never end? Because our flesh likes to sin. We like it, we want it. Let me submit to you, if you're dealing with a, a recurring sin, one that just won't let go of here, one that you visit every, every couple of months or so, the third time you go to God with it, in repentance, okay? If that doesn't seal the deal, then you need to find someone you trust and you need to take the power of secrecy away from the sin through repentance. Get help. Get help. Ask the Lord to change your heart. Ask the Lord to sear your flesh over that sin craving so that you don't go back to it. Yes? Repentance. We just did that. Petition. Moreover, prayer grants us the opportunity to present our request to God. We should petition God to help us fulfill the God-given purpose of our lives. We do have a purpose. As Christians and believers, that age-old question, why am I here? What is my purpose? We know what that is. God has said, number one, love the Lord your God with all your soul, your strength, your mind, and your heart, right? Mm -hmm. Your purpose, to worship God. Yes. Oh, by the way, you cannot do this without Him. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. With me on that? I'm with you. Amen. Can't do anything without Him. Nope. All of these aspects of prayer involve communication with our Creator. <clears throat> Prayer bubble, right? Goes where we go. We roll. Yeah, literally, it's biker, right? Okay? <laughs> it is indeed a call for rich relationship. God always calls us into relationship. Not so much religiosity, but relationship number one. Sometimes, I think God hates religion too. He's all about relationship. <clears throat> Prayer is vital because it invites God to intervene in the believer's life every day. It says here, God does not get involved in our lives without being asked. And to a large extent that's true, but I know for a fact that God watches over me and he intervenes in my life on a daily if not hourly basis. He knows where I'm going. I don't. So he always kind of guides me. So he told us to ask so that we can receive. Thus a prayer is the way to ask so that you can have victory in life. It is important because this prayer and this relationship with God is a supernatural tool that gives us the advantage over this generation. Yes? Yes. This is where I stopped yesterday at our chapter meeting. That's right. <laughs> I told them there was another page and a half. They have to come here if they want to hear it tomorrow. <laughs> One reason we know that God hears our prayers is because he has promised to hear them. Even if he doesn't always answer the way we think he should, he still hears us. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Funny thing, there's not been one time in all the challenges and what have you and goof ups I've made that God has ever taken my advice to fix it. <laughs> no, never did. But it did get fixed. Mostly it had to do with fixing me. That's right. Psalm 55, this is going on about prayer and how it works and all through the Bible. Prayer is, is absolutely the plumb line. It is our life connection. Yes, it is. Mark 11, 24. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. There's a qualifier on this. Okay? That qualifier here is that the prayer is in accordance with the will of God. If you're pursuing the purpose that God has put on your life and your heart, and you're asking God to open a door, and it's a big door, and everybody's pounding on it, but the door won't give. It's the Holy Spirit that comes and says, come over here. But you walk around the corner, and there's a little door. It's open. Just use this one. Hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> mm. 
James 5.16 Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Amen to that. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and it's effective. About prayers, there's three types that I'm aware of. The first one, you pray and it happens. Boom. It's all good. Everybody goes home happy. The second one, this takes time. Sometimes it's doctors, sometimes it's medicine, vitamins, exercise, a lot of different things, but it's a heart tune-up that takes a little bit of time. The third one, mm, this is the one that can take a lifetime. It's not uncommon for me to hear that somebody's mother has been praying for them for 20 years, maybe even 30. When you enter into a prayer, be prepared to go the distance. God is not obligated to answer instantly or even in a mid-range. But he will answer it. Amen. It is be prepared. Can I go further into that? Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times I've prayed for something. It didn't happen. And I said, well, it must be God's will. And I just gave up it and washed my hands of it and walked away. And then the Holy Spirit nagged me about that. He said, you quitter. Get back in your bubble. <laughs> Keep on. All right. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Do not be anxious. That's another word for worry about anything. Yeah. But in every situation, by prayer, petition, and thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's hard to pray sometimes because it requires humbling yourself. Now you're in the realm of things where you can't fix it. That's right. And if you don't have something in your life that you can't fix, you will. That's God's way of saying, pay attention to me. We're going to walk through this together. So it's hard to pray because humbling yourselves means getting over ourselves and coming to the end of our stubborn and sinful selves. And that's hard. It's a process. When we pray, we die to self. Right? We're submitting. We're giving it up to God. This is beyond us or it's something we deeply want to share with the Lord or he wants to share with us. And the truth about that is that death hurts. And humility is just a little bit of that. Still not stop you. Throughout the Bible are scriptures with the imperative command to pray from the beginning to the end. Luke 18, 1 says, And he spoke a parable to them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Faint means gets tired, get bored, give up. I don't want or I don't feel like it. This is a statement, not that some men should pray, but that men, mankind, womankind, everywhere and all times should pray. This is your walking bubble. Amen. You walk in prayer. And anything this bubble touches, you focus on. You ask the Holy Spirit, what about this? Stop that. Amen. So our prayers really do make a difference, not only because they change us in the way we view God, but because they're the means God uses to intervene in the world. And you get in the picture of the power of prayer, it's huge, it's huge. It's like a beam of light that covers the earth and it goes right straight up to God. And he channels it right down into us and around the world. This is a big deal, it's a big opportunity. It's unimaginable really. God wants to do through us. We have not because we ask not. Therefore, God moves when we ask. Again, that's a matter of humility. There's some things that you want to handle yourself, you think you can do, or you should be able to do. You think you ought to be able to handle this. And it's just not working out. So you have to ask. Our prayers are part of His plan. <coughs> God will see to it that we have things to pray about, right? Mm -hmm. He can be sure. The power of prayer really can help to heal the sick. I believe this. I believe that prayer heals. 
I also believe that occasionally it's not so much the physical healing we need as it is the spiritual and emotional redirection and healing that we need. They go hand in hand. <clears throat> An international study, and these guys are careful about not telling us who they are, but they did a study. They found, especially if the well-wisher, that would be the, the Christian, the prayer, is standing near the person they're praying for, this is in a hospital situation, researchers say the vision and the hearing, <coughs> pardon me, the hearing of the patients in their test improved after healing practitioners prayed for them. This is all they're willing to admit publicly that their hearing and the vision improved, but imagine what they really saw that they're afraid to admit that God heals, that he does the miraculous. But they will go so far as to say they have proof that the prayer of the faithful and of healing works. It makes a difference. They document it, but I think they're afraid of it. Prayer is a Christian's way of communicating with God. We pray to praise God and thank him and to tell him how much we love him. We pray to enjoy his presence and tell him what's going on in our lives. God always knows what's going on in my life. I'm the one that doesn't know. And that's why I have to talk to him to find out. We pray to make requests and seek guidance and ask for wisdom. God loves this exchange with his children. Just as we love the exchange we have with our children. We can see where they're going and what they're doing. And when they ask us what's going on, isn't it our pleasure to help them, to guide them, to help them with it, whatever it is? It is, it's his too. Prayer is a place of admitting our need of adopting humility. Remember what adoption means. It's permanent. It can't be renounced. You can't be disowned. You're going to adopt prayer into your life as a permanent part of your prayer bowl. So, we adopt humility and we claim proudly our dependence upon God. Prayer is a needful practice of the Christian. Prayer is the exercise of faith and hope. Prayer is a privilege of touching the heart of the Father, the Son of God, Jesus our Lord. And the Bible speaks much of prayer from the beginning to the very end. In closing, a couple of thoughts. What is a God-sized prayer? Well, if God's only a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger than you are, then I submit your prayers are kind of small. That's not to say God isn't concerned with the small prayers. He is. But a God-sized prayer is something you dare to ask that only God can do. Those are the ones that this generation needs. And that's what we're here for. So the size of your prayers, like I said, reflects the size of your God. You with me on this? Okay. Hmm. And I am finished. Thank you so much. Wow.